All right, are we ready to start? Yeah, go for it. Okay, hi everybody. Here is Matt speaking. Welcome to the the Armoring webinar. Um, my name is Matt. Um, we will go here for about, I think an hour, is it true? Yeah, yeah thereabouts. Maybe a little bit plus. And uh, I'm really excited to have you all joining here today. We will go through some questions and answers about the armoring, what it is, how to use it, how you can make a profession out of it. Um, there are some people from the last training who might want to share some of their experience from the last training. Um, some of the assistants are here. And uh, uh, I would like to introduce to my left first, Deanne. Um, would you like to say a few words to yourself? I can say a few words. I'm there. And I think most of you know me. Uh, those of you that don't know me will get to know me over the next hour. Yeah. So I think that's uh, all I can say for now. Okay. And to my very right, beautiful Susanna mm -hmm. Beatrice. Oh, thank you. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Susanna, Susanna Beatrice, and I am very familiar with most of you as well. Same like Dian, who will get to know me over the on this hour. And I'm also the co-founder of the Armoring Arts. And I'm excited to be here with you today. Yeah. Hmm. Back to you, Matt. Okay. And um, so how we want to start, Sana, in the end. We want to just like say a little bit about ourselves, how we found into the armoring. Do you have any other idea how you want to structure it? I guess that's a good, good, can be a good start. Yeah. But let's make it short, huh? Yeah. <laughs> so Would start. you like to start short? So you, you go I will, ahead. yeah, yeah. And Dian is the short, he always, uh, super short. I can do it in two <laughs> words, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I started. <laughs> uh, the thing is, uh, the armoring really for me was a uh, kind of a fluke discovery. I had no idea that the armoring as such existed until I had a session of Chine Sang, which is a massage of the belly tissue. And then the guy that was doing it had this knack of pressing and holding the points that were quite intense. And so the result was that I was forced to breathe into it, feel it, transmute it, work through it, and it changed my life. So that was the discovery of what can happen when a practitioner knows how to hold space for deep transformation. So that was the ignition of the whole system that then led to uh, quite a few years of discovering different ways, pathways of what's the quickest, most effective, most efficient and most loving way of opening the depth of my being and exposing the shadow. So that kind of took some years. And I guess I'm still doing it. I'm still discovering. Right now, I'm discovering the armoring on a spiritual level. So the journey never ends. So um, I can talk more into it, but for now, I think that's enough. Mm -hmm. Like to go next, Sana? Sure. <clears throat> so in the realm of transparency, for some reason, my heart is pounding so much. It's almost like a little comfortable so i don't know why maybe a little nervous uh, i'm gonna take a moment to feel into that mm. Mm. <clears throat> so um the armoring for me how it started was really when i came into the tantric field and I got super interested about the uh, Kundalini and Kundalini awakening. And there was this kind of movement starting in Sweden in around 2010. And I was like, fuck, I really want to learn this with, you know, circulating sexual energy and increasing my, my, yeah, just, I just got curious about learning to circulate sexual energy more. And I started to hear about, hear about the armoring and I found different practitioners and I tried it out and I really didn't have I didn't really didn't know what to expect, but I had such a profound life changing experience when I received my first internal de armoring. Uh, it was a man working on my cervix, and it was as if I met abuse from 
generation, like female generation, back, 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 way back. And it was so painful and was, you know, both my own abuse or the abuse I've been through and women in my lineage and beyond that, as I said. And in the moment, I felt so much pain and so much bliss at the same time. And I was, I made a commitment that I wanted to learn this method and I wanted to spread it with as many people as possible. And that's how I started to grow and learn and train more in the arm ring on the physical aspect of the arm ring. And the arm ring for me has, um, the angle of the arm ring where I come from has always been that of increasing more joy, more uh, life force energy, of becoming more alive, yeah? And I can talk much more about it, but with time I realized the whole life is about the armor. It's like, how can I de-armor my limiting beliefs? How can I de-armor uh, my inner small talk? How can I turn my, <laughs> how can I grow into more power? How can I contribute more in the world? Like everything, life is a, it's a lifestyle for me nowadays. So, um, yeah, I stopped there. Mm, wonderful. Okay. Thank you. Okay. The armoring to me, my first experience was as well in 2010, where a practitioner in a private environment were walking on my arm to show me what the armoring is. Um, um, and I was thinking kind of just like, yeah, as a, as a kind of strong man, I just like, I endured to everything and let it happen. And, um, and I, I was just screaming, and at one point I just couldn't handle the pain anymore, and I started to cry. And um, so my first understanding of the armoring is just like you just cause as much pain as you can, so you just break open. And uh, and then I learned over the years um, uh, more in self study and different um, educations about what the armoring really is so just like releasing all tension out of the body and i just uh, studied the nervous system and trauma research and uh, consent uh, dynamics how communication and agreement works um, and i have probably received maybe 100 plus the armoring sessions so I uh, went to uh, bali i was living there on and off and i was training a practitioner there to touch my body exactly how my body was asking for it in deep tissue to release tension and i learned um, that the armoring is so beneficial on the physical on the emotional um, level and um, releasing tension out of the body and allowing the body to opening up and feeling really liberated and i mean over the years there were many other practices um, included for example genital de-armoring, um, uh, including anus and throat de-armoring and mouth and, you know, all these different areas. And this became like a sport for me to find different areas in my body where I wanted to release more and having more space and opening more up. And um, and you hear me probably saying that a few times we can only guide people as far as you've gotten yourself. And that was kind of sport to myself. How deep can I dig into my own uh, armor into my own protection shield and um, yeah I'm very very excited about this practice and uh, I think that's one of the most liberating practices that I know of mm. okay um, I'm just curious would we like um, to ask uh, because we have a handful of people from the last training here um, if they want to share their experience of the armoring and uh, want to hear them we can take up one person to start with. Yes. Yeah? Is there anybody of the group who was at the last training um, who would like to share their own experience? And that includes as well Heini, who was uh, uh, the head assistant there, um, um, who feels keen to share their own experience of what the dearmoring journey was for you. Naim. Get some online de armoring. <laughs> yes, Naim, please. You're still muted, Naim? In meanwhile, is, and if anybody's listening, if you have specific questions or wonder anything or anything specific you'd like to know, please write the question in the chat. 
because that will be very helpful for us as well to speak into your 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 wish or I uh, yeah, Naeem, I assume that you are on the phone and I can't really guide you, but I know there's an upper right hand corner. There's somehow the mute or unmute button, as far as I know. Um, or if somebody else is ready to talk while Naeem is getting his uh, audio ready. Michael raises a hand. You also muted. mute there you go there we are um for me uh, a great turning point uh during the dearmoring was something that um uh, susanna had noticed uh within me when i was working on people and that was because i wasn't expressing my desires and m my needs that i was actually sucking I was taking something away from my sessions unbeknown to myself and that was my way of getting love and it was really interesting so since then i've really showed up with my desires my needs etc and it was just it's been a game changer it's absolutely been a game changer it really really has it's been really incredibly powerful but i'd like to say something I, i've noticed um, and this is through doing practice sessions. And when we did the practice session in Brussels, et cetera, I'm seeing a very common pattern of a certain point within the liver uh, meridian. And it sits in uh, stomach 19 and 21, um, but it's at the tip of the liver, at the tip of the liver on the left-hand side, where a lot, a lot of release happens because i saw patterns of that with uh people during um uh you know on the course and also uh when i did uh you know uh trainings with other people it was really interesting hmm. thank you thank you thanks man Anybody else want to share their experience? I just would like to give one specific hand sign that everybody who has been at the training Naeem's camera uh, microphone is unlocked. So it's this sign. And everybody <laughs> who has been at the training knows what that means. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and if you would like to know, you can please feel free to ask. Naeem, please. <laughs> International dearmoring mudra. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, hello. I'm very happy to see you all here. Thank you for this opportunity. I yeah, I um I'm really it was a uh, new eye opening for me. Uh this 10 days course I was it was really uh, rewired my uh, idea about to uh so how i can uh, um uh go deeper into myself and um also uh, uh how i can uh, evolve my uh, uh my personal development uh, i feel like uh, my spiritual journey has uh, uh also get a very uh, big reboost uh, so I feel uh, uh, it is not just the physical and also very spiritual for me. Um, uh, I am practicing at the moment, uh, mostly uh, five days a week with my friend here. Wow. Uh, and uh, it feels really uh, a lot of uh, a lot of uh, learning, and I feel uh, uh, I learned something. It's it's beyond the the. Uh, it was beyond my imagination, actually, how the body, uh, how my body worked together with uh, uh, how it's connected to to the other bodies without my mind, and that that is quite uh, uh, surprising for me. So uh, this is just one of the uh, one of the experiences I was blown away, uh, mm -hmm. and it feels really, uh, um, it was really, I feel really blessed. <laughs> to uh, have this opportunity so 
I really recommend uh, everyone, all of my friends, to go to you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, thank you. I'm trying to uh, learn uh, more and uh, understanding deeper uh, how this art works. So, uh, and I'm in touch with uh, uh, you guys, uh, the teachers, and uh, 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 I'm. Uh, I'm seeing forward the next uh, course, what, what is the level two and the level three. So see you soon. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Naim. Thank you. I want to I wanna <clears throat> follow an impulse here. Uh, Thank you so much, Naim, for sharing it. Thank you, Michael. And for those who, who've been to trainings with us, you, you know by now what the arming is for us. And something that's very... Um, They matter really much for me than and what I think I can speak partly for all of us teachers, but is the emphasize on taking personal responsibility in life and to grow up and to live more and dare to live more. Yeah. So many times people come to the training and they believe like, oh, I'm gonna learn 22 points, exactly how I do it, and in what order, and then I'm gonna get these results. And <laughs> you know. <laughs> in the end it's always like oh fuck you know i got you know it's impossible to say what the experience is from the dearming training or from you know starting to incorporate the armoring into life and but for me is if we really want to make a change in the world we need to start to change ourselves we need to take radical honest responsibility and i don't say that from a place of being judgmental or you should do this or the the bad school teacher no at all it's really about how sincere am i to show up for myself in a life how sincere am i to take responsibility how sincere how daring do i how daring can i be to show up for that what matters for me and knowing that each and every step we take is a transformational process, it's a tra it provides transformation for other people around us, for generations, for the collective, for the whole, yeah? And for me, this is like my whole body is vibrating when I go there because this is something I want to just inject into the world. It's like <laughs> to stop the fucking mindfuck of who we are and who we are not and who we cannot be and what the fuck not to just dare and find the true power within and show up, yeah? And then we have these little limitations around us about, you know, it's just we're humans and that's part of the human right. But this is what the armoring is for. It's like peeling the layers from the mental bullshit, getting in contact with life force, with energy, with sexuality, channeling that, using that consciously. I don't say that sexuality is the root cause, Diana, I'm being mindful with you. But what I mean is to activate all our senses and to become more pure, a pure channel, yeah? And dare to step up, dare to show up. There is no fucking savior. You're not a victim. You're not broken. <laughs> it's just this, yeah? And with some help, find the right tools to learn to navigate in the world, yeah? Because what I see often is that people are... Most people believe that they are afraid of failure when they're actually afraid of success. They're actually more afraid of showing up in their power. So they keep on playing small and they keep on staying stuck in their smallness. And this is never going to change the world. It's never going to change anything by pointing fingers and blaming and not showing up for ourselves. Yeah? Are you following me? Does, do you agree? Raise a hand. This is important. I mean, for me, it's important. I don't know if it's important for you. <laughs> But I think we, most of us can agree that we want to be alive, yeah? Most people walk around feeling dutiful and living a life that is not even true, it's not authentic. So what I want to bring into this school and into this world and the, the way I try to live my life is to be the change that I wish to see in the world. <laughs> oh, well done. I mean, it's an interesting dynamic when you shared in the beginning, Sana, about just like, oh my God, my heart is beating. I feel a little bit nervous. So no, I don't know why. Meditation for each and one of you here, I have the same. And I guess the end, and I guess each and one of you has, when you're coming into a situation where you're not feeling kind of confident, then you just feel kind of nervous and you want to opt out and just find a way of kind of getting 
kind of into it or want to hide a little bit. And I would like to give you an example and that might be resonating with you. Uh, some of you might know this idea when you play a computer game, right? And when you play a computer game, you only see on the screen what the computer is rendering for you, what you're supposed to see. Yeah? And when you imagine your life, you only have the broadband of your awareness of that, what you're supposed to see in your life. You know your nine to five job or your friends or people you know. You only you know the street you're living in, your supermarket, you know where you get your kind of fruits or something. So in the armoring, it's this the the in the present moment awareness allowing ourselves to to dive a level deeper out of this rendered reality how it should be and creating new access points to um, engaging and relating with people and with life yeah? and that's working on an emotional level on a physical level and on a spiritual level kind of you know for example you have your your game your game of your story is rendered and all of a sudden you have a tool in your hands you're getting out of that rendering and seeing reality from another perspective and all of a sudden just like holy mother this is a complete new universe out there I have never seen before. And this is, this, is, this is my reality. This is what I have experienced, and I guess some of you as well. Dianne, would you like to add something? No. <laughs> <laughs> so so my, my question would be for people who have been at the de-armoring training. Um, uh, how, how is your feeling when you arrived there? How did you felt when you came? What was, what was your... What were you afraid of? What was your obstacle? What was difficult for you? And what was it that you wanted to work through if you did to share? Please feel free and uh, maybe share what came out on the other side. What is your new rendered reality looked like after the training? So just like to give uh, another perspective of your life. Nancy, Nancy please. Okay, so I should get that away probably. Nice. Oh, right. Okay, yeah, so I arrived um, with a lot of fears there. Um, well, on the one hand, of course, I wanted to learn the techniques, but on the other hand, I was also aware of my um, preconceived notion, nicely bred and habituated over time about men and how that all works. And it was pretty um, negative, I'll put it like that. <laughs> And so I got confronted in the training about uh, my perce perception of men and uh, my mistrust, I guess, in general, it was mistrust and um, yeah, I guess mistrust is, is uh, a good one. And so I got confronted and of course that also reflects on my own, how I feel feminine within myself, if I have access to it or not and, and all of that. So I was uh, working on that a bit. And then I had um, the Yoni de armoring, which was really uh, a turning point for me. I actually felt at a certain point that there was like a, a, a switch that got flipped inside of me. And I realized actually, men are great. I love men. <laughs> <laughs> Bring it on. <laughs> so, you know, I feel I really... Um, I really enjoyed it and I had more also more connection with my feminine side and um, after I came back home I felt much more energy and much more uh, happy inside and um, I started dating again which is good <laughs> so that went actually quite easy uh, like in very short time there were a couple of dates which I was very surprised about because it wasn't like that before so it was an interesting process for me to go through and then meeting people and just be very experimental and just go with the flow and, and look at it and showing up and so on. So for me, there was a big change in, in that perspective, but also, of course, inside of myself where I could feel um, I and I knew that already I needed to work on my femininity and connecting with that powerful source within me, that uh, the creative force within me. And so this is, of course, still an ongoing process. It's not an overnight thing, but yeah, that was a really nice um yeah experience so i mm. thank you very much all of you and also the participants mm. for this thank you so much nancy and i just want to say this is this is so rich so the three of us we could just like 
promise and pray the golden trumpets down from the skies, but it doesn't make any sense if you can't hear from people who are going through this training and really having a life-changing shift. You know, the, if, if, if this is not <laughs> expressed, so, so we, we, we want to hear you and thank you so much for sharing that, Nancy, Michael and Nahim. Anybody else would like to share, please feel absolutely welcome to express your experience. Simo, please. Yeah, so um, for me, it didn't feel like this big change. Um, it's rather subtle changes or, or kind of a logical step on my path. Um, I had big hopes of uh, get, getting a lot more connection to myself, to, to be aware uh, of, more aware of my feelings, all that stuff. And I'm still struggling with that. But still, um, I think um, there are subtle change, uh, changes. I can't just nail it down uh, one by one. But um, I think just recently in personal intimate encounters, I thought, wow, um, parts are still the same. But on other parts, I do have more uh, tools. I do discover or uh, more details. I'm aware of other things. And uh, it's difficult to say what exactly is now about the armoring, what is about consent, what is general life experience. Mm -hmm. But uh, it feels all right to me. Mm -hmm. And just today I had I found time to quickly read through your email, Susanna, about regression. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of resonance. Hmm. Uh, right now, I don't feel that much in a state of regression. But uh, I also had kind of doubts coming up. Am I still on the right path? Or am I kind of abusing my skills? Am I just messing around instead of doing something reasonable or good with what I'm able to? And I mean, these questions are not, um, um, how shall I say, heavy questions or something I'm afraid of now. I just find it interesting. Okay, questions are here in the room. I can be with it sooner or later. Maybe an answer will show up. So maybe to get back to the um, picture of playing a game, I still have... Uh, I'm still playing the same game. Maybe I still have the same rendering, but I have more skills. I have more tools uh, in this game. I uh, see more details in the graphics or whatever. So, yeah, it's it, for me definitely not the big change, but a good thing and um, a progression, regression, progression. <laughs> uh, Really, it feels cool after all, and uh, mm. I'm very curious where uh, it will lead me in future. Mm. Can, I, can, I, can I say uh, uh, one sentence to that, Simon? Yeah? So, so my experience is um, with, with people, the way how you share that is, you know, in the training, sometimes people come who have very little experiences. And then there are people coming as well. They have tons of experience. They have the art practitioner. They have tons of work. And they just want to get the tools of the armoring. And they are as well welcoming in the right place. And for them, it's, you know, sometimes it's just like a micro shift, you know, like a, like a, like a micro movement of a, of a different direction. And in the beginning, it doesn't look like as if there's a big change. But it can happen, you know, after a year or two years or, you know, longer time this little micro kind of shift has a big impact in life you know and uh, but for some people in the training it's just like it's a completely quantum shift of reality yeah and mm -hmm. and um it's it's like you know in the in the tre session that we're doing in the dearmoring training some people have this micro shaking you know on the subtle subtle level of the cellular level to release tension and some people have these massive waves and neither the small waves nor the big waves, they're right or good or bad. They're just different. 
and so many different people have different experiences and you and your experience seem most absolutely perfect exactly as it is yeah i also really experience it as the right thing as this uh, uh, piece of the puzzle which fits in and i still see the whole picture of the puzzle but the armoring was one or a couple of those puzzle parts which uh, are fitting in. Mm. So I would like to switch the conversation just one moment, Robert. Super, super good to see you. Long time no see, man. Very wow, what a surprise. Good yeah, all time. Anyway, so I would like to shift the conversation to people, the questions of the people that actually haven't done the training, because maybe by now you might have some questions that you want answered. So let's have some space for that. And then towards the end, we're going to answer the questions that were written in the, uh, in the chat. Mm -hmm. So those of you that haven't done the training, feel free to ask. And if you feel shy or of, of, uh, unmuting yourself, then it's the perfect time to start the armor or you can also write it in the chat box and <laughs> I have always an exercise handy okay let's do that first that exercise so Hildegun I feel you want to say something ask something you're kind of glued to the screen are you sure you're welcome to ask. Okay. Okay, I have a little exercise that takes about two or three minutes or something like that. And just to give you an understanding about your rendered reality and how difficult it might be to just like see a broader spectrum of your perception. Would you like to do that? Yeah, you can do that if you want to follow. If you don't want to, you don't. You just look what other people do, but you get your own experience when you do that. So I invite you to make a fist. Yeah? And some people in the training have done that before. They know where it goes. And you just really squeeze your hand as if you're just, oh, just like really as strong as you possibly can. Just really hold your fist strong, 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 strong. Ah. <sighs> A few more deep breath and really hold it, squeeze it really hard. <sighs> and then you keep your fist close, but take the energy out of your hand, but it's leave your fist it. close. Yeah. Yeah. And then you notice your fist is still close and is the fist. Yeah. So if we, if we would sit here, it would probably take half an hour that your hands, your knuckles would open naturally by itself. And this is how most people live their life. I have my lift, uh, I've lived my life pretty much like that. You know, I had a grandfather, German, old Nazi, was still in the war. And he was saying, you know, just like, you just bite your teeth, you squeeze your ass and put your heels together and you and then you don't feel anything you do it <laughs> and you know we just we we all have access to this holding pattern that's conditioned into our psyche into our emotional physical thing that we just only have the reality that we have let's say this little fist or other parts of the body and some people never open up their fist just try to cut a piece of meat with a fist, with a fork. <laughs> so, and this is, this is what the armory can literally help you. So if this is a defense mechanism in your hand, in your fist, in your body, emotionally, physically, in any kind of regards, and you don't know how to break out of that holding pattern that you have, you know, just running always in same circles, you're running always in same structures, this is what we do in this training, you know, in a very safe environment with people um, who uh, have similar life stories like you. We just come together and then we're just actually helping you knuckle by knuckle, slowly, gentle, carefully, and opening it up. 
And what happens, you start to see and experience a different reality of your perception of your body emotionally and spiritually that you have not seen before. And then you recognize, okay, I can make a fist whenever I need to, but I don't need to have a fist if I don't need my fist. Uh, and this is, this is the, the, the benefits of the armoring that you have the choice when you know how your fist feels and look like to make it or when you don't need it, you know how to stay open. It's a little bit of an exercise that might give you a little bit of a physical um, understanding of what we are doing. I love the metaphor of, of that one also of just our tight the tightness of our persona of the ego structure of our thought patterns the way we choose to live our lives you know it's really we don't choose to work with it and look at it yeah. so so, so, the, so that's one second so the question would be if you have in your life the fist in your pocket and you bite your teeth or something else where you just run against the wall and you have your own rendered reality where you just want to break free and see another perception. Um, where would that be? If you have any question around that, please feel absolutely free. And we are here to answer that. The end, please. No, I just wanted to uh, ask again if there's anybody of the people that don't know us, if they have any questions by now or concerns, you know. Or what brought you to this uh, webinar? You must be curious. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Please, Marie. Yeah, I'm. I got very curious about the twenty-two points, and I don't know how to ask any question about that. But I got very curious, and since I've studied uh, something called Jin Shin Jitsu, which is 26 points, and, and you work with the depths, um, the pulse, depths of the pulse. So I wonder if you can say anything about the 22 points in the armory. Yeah, I think that, uh, it was yeah. just a joke. It was a joke. <laughs> what a joke. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. There are 500 million. Oh, Sala was making. Wow. I was just, I yeah. was simply storytelling yeah. and, 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 and wow. just made it up. No, oh, but there was, there was, uh, the, I can invent the story for you. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was an analogy that in our mm -hmm. style of the armoring, we don't follow the system. So there are no like ABC that you need to learn and then you can do it. It okay. was kind of talking about the uh, opposite way, if you like, mm. to do it. At least the way I spoke oh. about it. Yeah. I really love that 22 points. You make me so disappointed. But I can invent that. I already have it. <laughs> I'm, I'm very creative and adaptive and flexible. And I love, love it. So I already got a little, a little map. So I'm going to invent a, a torso map. Mm. Points. <laughs> uh, yes, it's just nice being here since I know Matt and I've heard about it and you. So, so I I'm keep, gonna give you I'm gonna give you a little bit of an enjoying. answer to 22 or 26 points. Mm. In my experience so far, it really it's 90 percent of the armoring in the style that we do it is down to how. I touched you and how I looked at you and what was the tone of my voice and what was my energy and my emotional energy doing to you. And only 10% is actually technique. So the 26 or 22 points are minor, minor detail in the whole totality of the armoring session. Hmm. So that gives you an idea of the depth, scope and the possibilities that can happen within a session. Mm. And this is why when we train people, we encourage them to, um, through study and practice, to design their own style, to bring out what they already have. Somebody comes from psychotherapy background, somebody comes from a tantric background, somebody comes from a counseling background, somebody is a massage therapist, somebody has no experience. So they all start studying the armoring. And within our school, we 
help people catalyze and distill what is their superpower, how are they going to do it? I, we uncover the 90% of the value of the session and only 10% they're going to learn ABC and press here, press there, do this, do that. Do you get me? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. And the 26 and I, are the same, you know, it's just the beginning of something much bigger. Hmm. But thank you. Thank you. And, and, and the beauty is also, it is great you bring you brought it up, Ingrid, actually, because the beauty of, of, of you know, body dearming, I mean, why it's, I mean, both we can work after the meridian systems and we can work with Chinesang, we can apply different modalities onto the body. So it's not like fixed to one form. It's this, the way we have developed this is because we did a lot of explorations. We received a lot of sessions. We studied different modalities and then we created a system that we think works basically. But also what is why it's it not possible to make an ABC out of the armoring is because trauma is stored very differently in bodies. Yeah, so some some people might have trauma because they got hit somewhere. My, some people might have sexual trauma, might, uh, you know, body is very intelligent when it comes to repress certain happenings and certain emotions. So we rather want to train a super skill of heightened sensitivity, a presence, awareness, we can sense the body we can notice the shifts in the client we can notice different um, temperature in the body so we can locate and find where the trauma is located in the body with the help of the client yeah and with that said it's also <clears throat> i remember when i started with the armoring and i had so much performance anxiety i was like oh, we have this client and i have to fix this client i have to perform something i have to do something and in the beginning i was so afraid that i would fuck up so i actually cancelled sessions because i was so afraid of failing yeah that's true oh my god if i just shared what i've done because i was so afraid of showing up like so afraid but then i realized it's not just about me it's not about me just doing something. My my skill is to be present, loving, caring, accepting, hold a big space, but then also invite the client to breathe, to be present. Like how it's a, it's a it's a dance, you know. All the time it's a dance, and I'm talking also to you who are you know who've been at the last training or have done trainings before that you can probably. Uh, relate to that of the performance anxiety it's like oh, I'm not good enough like, can you raise a hand if you recognize yourself yeah <laughs> so that is also with the arming like we learn we become experts of human interactions we become an expert of feeling ourselves of expressing ourselves and the beauty of that is also that when we then go deeper in ourselves like Matt said then we can also you know we become more sensitive and receptive to that what is going on in front of us and through our own deep, dedicated work, we then can take people to a deeper level that they can't go by themselves, yeah? This is why it's this dance all the time of going deeper and deeper in ourselves. We can transmit that and, and learn more, yeah? And that's the beauty. That's why the armory never, for me, um, never gets boring because I, I will keep on growing. I keep on growing, I keep on learning, I keep on deepening, I keep on transmitting. And, in a different way. I mean, it's an, it's an ongoing process. And the more I do that, the more I see that deeper my students go as well, or my students, people that come to learn from me. It's really amazing. And, and I would like to add something to that as well. Um, yeah, probably 80, 90% is intuitively working with people in there. And, and as the training has, of course, a structure, and in that structure um, is mainly the who is, who is there and what is the situation people coming to the training. And then we're working a lot individually with this dynamics, what people come with. And there's as well so much frame that we just share and so much stuff that we sometimes can't share because 10 days is a long time, but it's limited to the, to the amount of um, um, material that we could share, but we share a lot of technique as well. So, so we show a lot of points. We show a lot of different dynamics, a lot of techniques, a lot of um, uh, demos, how to practice that and how to use that. And so there's a lot of um, mm. uh, know-how in the structure. Um, but we, one thing we, we don't do by definition is just like 
you point here and then you get that result. This is definitely <laughs> not what is happening. No. And I have one question because we have we have Heine here as, as the head assistant, and I'm just curious how your perception, do you want to share a few words about your perception as the middle part between participant and and assistant? So so about how that was for you that training. Hmm. Wow. Um, I think what I want to say is that having known all three of you for many, many years, uh, having witnessed all your, your, your transformations and journeys and what I have seen of you and how much you have grown, it, that this training, the last one, it just completely blew me away the way you work together and then the way you complete each other in um, in sharing what, what the gifts that you have is is so completely unique and and for me uh, being able to be in that space i i really love the rawness and and the and the real deep powerful honest uh, transformative spaces and and it takes a lot to hold that um and I really love it that I get to that I get to connect with everyone personally, and I also get to observe the space a little bit from the outside. I always, always, always learn something new, even though it's been many years. And um, this just comes to me now that that is my dearmoring process is learning from from that space, mm -hmm. observing everyone uh, having these amazing transformations and um being able to put uh, sometimes in the the little uh, gold nuggets that i have i just love it <laughs> thank you mm, thank you for sharing Heine. um i'm a little bit conscious of time yes. so let's go a third round for the people that don't know us do you have any questions because time is going to run soon so now is the time Okay, so I would like us to answer uh, the couple of questions that people already asked in a chat. Can I say one thing Anna? first? Yeah. yeah. So that that I for people who have not met us yet, perhaps, and it just <clears throat> uh, when when you spoke about the rawness of the space, Heine, and I think that is what is unique with that what we offer is that we really want to bring in that like, we don't sit here as like we are the teachers and you have to do what you know you tell you to do only to come no, back home, right? <laughs> 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 but really we want to invite like we all three want to contribute just to more liberated and transformative spaces in a safe and and profound way and so we really invite the whole every aspect of this human experience like really we, it is I see it as as a, a different rings. It's like we have a ring in the middle with the the personal transformation that simmers out to the collective transformation that simmers out into you know a more uh, no the personal and generational and the collective. Yeah. So all the work we do in there becomes like intertwined with our own journeys, with the group journey, with our generational journey, and then with the collective. So it becomes a very very deep and transformative space and in there we cannot have judgments you know like we're really welcome it's like we have a big fire <laughs> metaphorical fire in the middle of the circle we just allow every little aspect of our human psyche to come up because the more we can liberate and release ourselves from that the more space we create and the more consciousness is rising actually the more we liberate you know everything around us and this is what I, I love because I want to be in a world where we don't need to hide, where we can be ourselves, where we can be relaxed, where we can show our fears, our insecurities, our fuck ups, our failures, where we can meet in like minded spaces where it becomes more fun. <laughs> yeah, where we let go of the grip, the tightness, where it becomes more smooth, you know, become like seaweed a little bit more, you know, you know, it's just a little bit. <laughs> yeah, and one, one thing for, for sure, I can only speak for myself, but, you know, uh, 
the three of us doing the training, we are not finished products and we're going through it. Uh, every training through a transformation. Speak for yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm full of shit. <laughs> Sometimes. I'm <laughs> <laughs> no, I really like what I also want to add in, like the reason we can joke <laughs> like this and, and laugh about it is because what our participants don't see behind, like we finish the group setting and then we go into our house and then the workshop starts. And so this is where we take each other apart and help each other get real, like really real. So if you think that we are real with you in the circle when we work with you, you can only like times 10 and put some more oil on the fire. What happens when we're on our own? Because nothing, I mean, nothing gets untouched. If there is a little bit of inauthenticity in one of us, if there is a little bit of bullshit, if one of us feels like, nah, this is doesn't sit right, it gets lifted and it needs to be worked through. And there are serious life issues sometimes, like really, like we don't play games. And so this is what ripples out into the group because of the attitude that we have towards ourselves and commitment to us. This is what actually gives space and, and depth, the sense of reality, because we don't play games. You know, they're not games, there's real life, real people, real pain, real transformation. And so, yeah, this is like a little bit from behind the scenes, you know? Yeah. So there were sure. two questions. One is from Nancy about the armoring in case of difficulties in conceiving. Um, and another one from Mira about... Uh, Let's deal with the first one. Yeah. Um, I would never ever make that as a promise that the armoring can help in case of difficulties conceiving. My experience working with hundreds of women and doing genital dearmoring is that when uh, women letting go of the contractive holding holding mechanism, that 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 the that the that the control the the the, the kind of fear based um, holding patterns can let go, that conception. In, this is just an assumption. I got, there's no proof of that, but that that the openness of the body and the and the the receptivity of the of the female genitals becomes more fluid and lucid, and I, and and I think it will have an impact. But there is no scientific proof for that. But that's that's my that that, that would be my, my my take on that. Sana and the end. What's your experience? Yeah, I don't really have anything else to add because the one thing for sure is no promises can be made. And also one thing for sure is the armoring is not for everything. It's not the answer to everything. So I would look at it holistically from definitely do the armoring because it releases all sorts of hidden inhibitions, hidden fears, maybe a yeah, little bit you shared about your life and your mistrust of men. What I know about the strength and power of the spirit in body is we can just literally stop anything because we don't believe in it or because we are afraid. So it is possible, like as a possibility, it is possible that you just turn it off, like you will just not get pregnant because you don't trust men. Like as an idea, it's definitely possible. I don't know, but it's very possible. So I would just like look at it holistically and like medically and from the armoring and from psychology and from emotional baggage and from belief systems and really start looking at yourself seriously, like you already do. And then see what happens. That would be my five cents. I guess, is it for you, Nancy? Do you asking for yourself? No, you're not asking for yourself. No. Okay. Well, I, I would, then it gets uh, even more tricky because we really need to talk to a person like, yeah, it's not possible theorizing. Theory. I, I would, uh, I copy paste what you say, Dan. I think it's impossible to say really what is what. And, but I know, for example, Sigia Rehfeldt, maybe you could connect with her. She's a midwife and she worked, she's really great with the armoring and she works, uh, you know, she worked she works with birthing children and done that for, I don't know, 20 years or something. Maybe connect with her and she might have another answer. Yeah. 
I can send you her uh, details. Yeah. And then the question from um, Amira uh, was to Susanna and Diane. <laughs> I, just I want to take that one. Oh, yeah. I want to take it. <laughs> and at the end, you're, you're the specialist of that one. Yeah, yeah. And you're not going to like the answer because I propose we actually do a webinar on it because it's such a juicy and amazing question that is just not going to do it justice to try to squeeze something in two minutes that we have left. So how about we create another date and we make a topic celibacy or it's a good topic actually huh it's an amazing topic it's not amazing and we're even and i are going to have a profound uh, online <laughs> for those who they don't know i've been celibate now for seven years completely i've been horny and... as fuck for seven years. <laughs> And I'm somewhere in between. <laughs> I've also been horny, actually. That doesn't come, you know, celibacy doesn't stop it, unfortunately. <laughs> so I think this is really, I think this is a cool topic. I really like it. I think it's juicy. And I think we can definitely spend an hour or two kind of going, going round and round. So how about that? Yeah. Yeah. And all, yeah, I just feel like touching. Yeah, well, let's do that for sure. I mean, this is just not going to do it like then we start oh, and we finish at 10. But I just want to give her a little bit. Yeah, okay, go on then. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think, I mean, pros and cons, I, I guess just micro and micro answer is like at certain times in life, maybe you just want to be in celibacy. I've been in celibacy for a year that was like 12 years ago. And it's nice, you know, to go and maintain energy and cultivate that and be by myself. It, it does something, it leaves space. But I wouldn't cut out, I would never cut out sexuality out of my life. I would just be very mindful on what I do, who I share it with, and what is actually the life force doing for me. Yeah, am I shutting it down? Why am I blocking it? What is my intentions? What time of my life? What, yeah, what are my intentions of doing it? I think first and foremost, that's like step one. I would say the same thing for celibacy. It's like a, it yeah, is an undertaking. Both, and both. like, why, why would you want to ever do that to yourself? You know, what are the reasons, pros and cons? So this is all, I mean, it's a big conversation and, and but yeah, there isn't. That's I, what I, I meant, with the intention of, of both. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's have a, I, I, would, I would ask a question back in, in this regard, Mira, that um, celibacy, does that mean sexual, internal sexual exclusion? So is is the first question what what, is what does it mean? Or of celibacy for you, and is sexual liberation everything with everybody? So it's just like really. What do you mean by that? Yeah. What the terminology is you ask? So go on then, Mira, tell us. Uh, yeah, in a way, I'm uh, uh, talking about uh, the monk in the cave versus uh, the free love movement. Yeah, and or left or right-handed path or um containing energy or spreading it out in the world or you know in inside or outside i don't know and i'm always confused a little bit because i can't decide <laughs> i mean I, I like what you said it's a lifelong so you must have given yeah. some thought so yeah, yeah cool yeah let's have a deep kind of conversation about it at some point soon i'm totally up for it Oh God, I have so much to say about it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, everybody does, man. Everybody does, you know. I love it. It's gonna be like hundred people in a webinar. Yeah. <laughs> okay, there will definitely something come along in the next few weeks, so stay tuned. And because yeah. of time awareness, we're just coming to an end. Um, the end, Sana. Would you like to uh, give it a final thought? I mean, we need to talk about the trainings that are upcoming for people that might want to come and join. Mm -hmm. So we have a basic training in April 4th to 14th in Sweden in this funky new mansion that Sana found. It's like a Porsche thing beyond belief. So we're going to be there again. Uh, you're all invited, uh, even though the people that did it already are super invited to do it again because it does one the second time around. And obviously those that haven't uh, done it, you're very welcome to come as well. Uh, you're also welcome to ask us questions. 
I mean, you missed your boat this time, but uh, write us an email and uh, we're always there uh, to kind of have a Zoom chat one to one and uh, spend half an hour just talking to you personally to see if this is for you, if it's not for you, what you can expect, what you can't expect and stuff like that. And then before that, we actually have two events kind of back to back three weeks away from each other, which, yeah, it's not <laughs> ideal, but it just had to happen this time. And this is uh, Body, Sound and Breath at the beginning of February, which deals with a technical, more technical way of working on a body, because in a basic training in 10 days, we simply don't have enough time to go into depth of body work. And so the Body, Sound and Breath trains you in how to work the body, body part by body part, trains you how to work with sound, how to sound the vibration of the tension and how to teach your clients how to sound the, uh, their, their own vibration and release it. And also how to work with breath, how to include the breath into your, not breath work, but I, I cannot go online and uh, see the description and also look at the videos that I've done about it. There's plenty, but basically research it, it's good. And also body reading you know, learning how to read the body without having to talk to it. So this is body, sound and breath. And then three weeks later, Sana is doing the Diamond Through Pleasure. Do you want to introduce it? Yeah, so Diamond Through Pleasure is uh, <clears throat> it's kind of the initial style of how I started to work with Diamond, which is more of working with sexual energy, with arousal. That doesn't mean that we need to be turned on in a session all the time. Absolutely not. But we're going to in, in, increase life force and life force energy uh, more. And for me, and that comes also with different aspects of coming in connection with the, your own pleasure, the difference between how, how masculine and feminine arousal works, and also how we can apply this into sessions much more to get more juicy and alive. So I'm looking forward to and also because sometimes people think that the armoring and growth has to be like painful and suffering and hard but actually we can go through softening the body and opening the body we can release and melt open much more so we still you know we can cry and we can shout and god knows what we need to do but it becomes with a different expansion so it's just like a somehow a softer sweeter and more delicious way of opening the body for me so and what I would like to say to come to completion ish is please feel free to write in the chat about three words. What's your takeaway from this little webinar? What has been resonating with you? Anything you would like to know more of? Write five if you like to just like make it simple and easy. And um, I would like to drop in the chat a link. And this link is for each and one of you who have been to the training already if you want to recommend it to anybody but you don't know what to say send them that link they can come and have a 30 minute free call with me and ask questions what's the training about and how to use it and what it's for and what the practitioner uh, the dynamics are and everybody who is here who has not been at the training and is just curious and want to have that question answered and see how that uh, can be beneficial for for you feel totally free to reach out the link is right now right there and uh, you're more than welcome to reach out and book that call like, uh, like and um, looking forward to seeing you and talking with you. Yeah, and, and also if uh, I also write our let's say, email here, of course, you can reach out to us on Facebook as well to anyone there's like Dan or me or Matt you want to speak with. Sure. I'm totally cool to talk to anybody anytime about anything really. <laughs> I've got plenty of time. <laughs> We're lucky. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah. So, thank, thank you so you much, and... everybody. Thank you for coming. Thank you Beautiful so much to for see joining. those of you that we know, and really good to see those that we don't know. Hopefully, we're gonna get to know you, and uh, yeah, get in touch, stay connected, and stay tuned, and be well, and all that. Yeah, and I want to say one thing because I love, I function really, really well when people ask me questions or reach out and so on. So if you have, and that comes also for you who've done the training, like if there's specific topics you want us to do trainings on or videos on or webinars on, please reach out and ask questions. And that is same, maybe you are new to the or new to us and want to know more of something. 
come with a suggestion, come with a question, come with a topic, because it's really, for me, I love that I get something and I'm, I produce <laughs> a generator. So. I produce. <laughs> <laughs> Baby just like. Marie, she just, she just said, like, I'm interested in 22 points. I'm like, oh, I can create that. <laughs> so. So please come, the more you reach out and ask, you know, what, what you want, the easier it is for us to provide as well. Yeah. And to bring that to a completion for today, I would like to do that with a very um, sophisticated gesture. Yeah. <laughs> Ooh. See you. Good seeing so you. So just, just, just before we go, just before we go, just, just before we go, for those that don't know us, the new people in the group, like this thing here, do you have any idea what that actually means? Just like be brave and just explore. Let's see. <laughs> Why not? Come on, let's have fun. Come on, let's have some fun. You do whatever you want, of course. So, those of you that don't know us, please either write it or say it. Come on. <sighs> what can that be? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what does it mean? No? Oh, okay. You're going to have to come to the training to find out. Sorry. Energy. Yeah. Yeah, it's an energy connector for sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we love having fun. Some mysticism is good. We just leave it there. Robert, <laughs> leave it Robert, there. Robert, Robert, you have been in the training, I don't know, six, seven years ago or something. Do you know what it is? Yeah, I do, but I don't think I would spoil the experience for anyone. No, exactly. No, don't do it. No. <laughs> We're just going to change the logo, Dion, from now on. This is... Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I, do, I do want to know. Yeah, you can welcome to the training. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't in my training. I went to a training. Yes, I know. Yeah. Yeah. This is yeah. changing life. It's, what I, could I, it be? I, I, I think we just came up with it, but it's probably you have done the same. What could it be, Corinne? Huh? So many <laughs> options. Yeah. We just leave it. Yeah. <laughs> <Okay>. Anyway. <laughs> then, 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 Love you all. Enjoy your time. Enjoy your day. Looking forward to talking with you if you like. So good to see you. Ciao, 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 everybody. Bye.